very much for being with us today. We're going to give you an update on the triple homicide that occurred on Friday night. Our detectives have literally been working 24-7 since the moment we received the first 911 call in order to solve this horrific case. This is a sad case. They're all sad, but this one's particularly sad. You've got three best friends. What is more wholesome than going fishing near Frostproof on a Friday night? And that's what they were doing. And when they went out to Lake Streety Road, which is described to all of us as a clay road to nowhere, this is a clay road that runs off of Highway 27 and it dead ends about three, two and a half, three miles down the road into Otto Polk Road, which goes back into 27. It's not a thoroughfare road at all. It's orange groves and cow pastures and a beautiful lake and a community, a quiet community, except for Friday and Saturday night. After talking to some of the neighbors, they said, hey, gather up to drink and do drugs on Friday and Saturday night because it's a clandestine area. For those of you not who are not from the area, Frostproof is a wonderful, very, very safe community. In fact, all of Polk County is very safe. Our crime rate's exceptionally low. But it comes as a particular shock to the Frostproof community because it is a tight-knit, small area. It's at the very south end of our county and that south end of the county is exceptionally rural. It is about as far out in the woods as you can get. So on this Friday evening, these guys, as they do often because they are three buddies just as tight or f going to fish. We receive a frantic 911 call. When we respond, we ultimately talk to the dad, and dad's home in bed asleep. He knows that his son's going down there to fish with his buddies. He receives a night, an emergency call from his son, and all he can make out is help. Well, Dad jumps out of bed, dresses, and runs to the area as quickly as he can, where he encounters his son's truck parked in the road and parallel with and pointed in the other direction so that they would be talking driver's door to driver's door is the car of Kevin and Brandon or the truck of Kevin and Brandon and and they're all shot up it's a massacre he runs to his son's side and he and his son are there in, in, in an intimate moment with his son actively dying and his son is saying some things to him which obviously we're not releasing to the public at this point in time. And that's maybe too bad for the suspects of the murder and good for the investigation. Then he realizes he doesn't have a cell phone. And he jumps in his car and he runs back to the community of Sunray, which is just about five or 10 minutes away to a convenience store that once again, he knows the folks, they know him. 911 is called. The 17 year old daughter of the lady working in the convenience store goes back to the scene. And that's where dad now finds his son who is dying is deceased. There's been some question about well, why didn't dad use the son's ninth phone, the son's phone from there? Well, I don't know whether or not he looked for it, but he probably wouldn't have found it. We had a difficult time finding it ourselves after the fact when we were doing our investigation. And Dad, in this hyper state of wanting to get help, wouldn't have been able to find the phone, I don't believe. So the investigation's been going on. The good news is because of the media and social media, We've had well over 100 tips. Some of them look promising. Some of them are absolutely ridiculous, but hey, we'll take them all. We'll sort through them because we need the information. We still don't have arrest. 
at this moment. We are following this case up. I can tell you we started out the Saturday morning with the first press conference with a $5,000 cash reward, and we usually don't start investigations with cash rewards. That comes later. We today are prepared to go from 5000 to 15000 Our friends at FDLE, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, I talked to the commissioner twice over the weekend, said, Grady, we're, we're here to help. FDLE's great. They're always our partners and are so professional. They've got all of their laboratories on standby. We are collecting our evidence at this time, and they're going to put a rush through on that whenever we send it to the lab. But the commissioner took that a step further. He said, we want to also add to that reward. And I told Commissioner Rick Swearinger, and I said, I'm going from 5 to 15 on Monday. He said, count us in for 10 more. That's 25. The Florida Sheriff's Association said, we'll do five more. So I'm here today to tell you there's a reward of $30,000 at this moment in time. Just for information that leads to the arrest of these horrific criminals, and we believe there's more than one. There may not be because we don't have them yet, but... When you look at the crime scene and you look at what we saw, it gives us reason to believe, at least at the early stages of the investigation, that there was more than one suspect. But just for information leading to an arrest, you can make $30,000 and stay totally anonymous. You simply dial 1-800-226-TIPS, Crime Stoppers. They'll give you a code number. You give us information. We don't ever have to know who you are, and we can solve this crime. But we have to think about this. What's more wholesome than going fishing? Three buddies going fishing. We can all identify with that. And then being shot down in the middle of the road during the nighttime hours. We've got to bring these people to justice. It's important to understand that they've killed three people and to lose at this point. We don't believe, have zero evidence to believe that they're out looking for people to kill. But we also know that for whatever reason that somebody else crosses their paths, makes them mad, they have nothing more to lose. So it's important that we as a community all work together to make sure we get those folks locked up sooner rather than later. Are there any questions? Sir, do you believe this was random or do you have the heart of it? You know, when I stand behind this podium most of the time and talk about murders, I talked about either a domestic relationship gone bad or drugs and that doesn't seem to be at this point in the investigation the event at all. This does not look like a drug deal gone bad. We have zero evidence of that. It does not appear to be a domestic event. We don't know the reason at this stage of the investigation. Was it something as simple as the two guys or the three guys in the two vehicles because Damien was in a red truck and Brandon and Kevin were in a white truck that they pulled up side to side and talked about their fishing strategy and blocked the road and made somebody mad? Or did somebody follow Damien down there and shoot him, which is one of our theories? And at that time, Kevin and Brandon drive up, and it's, my goodness, they've shot and killed one, so they shoot and kill the witnesses. We just don't know. It's speculation at this point. But three people died, three very close friends, doing what 
millions of people did across this country this weekend, and that's fishing with friends and enjoying their time away from work. That's why we need help. Frostproof is a safe community, and it has shaken Frostproof to its very core. Any other questions? You said that um, it was brought from 5,000 um, to eventually 15,000, and then was it FDLE commissioner came in and brought it to 25,000? And Florida Sheriff's Association brought it to 30,000. No, I wouldn't. I would say that we are actively doing an investigation, and we want to solve this case sooner rather than later. I don't ever want somebody to say that we didn't do everything we could to get a triple murder solved as soon as possible. And then our colleagues from Florida Department of Law Enforcement, simply very professional, great teammates, always there to support us and help us. I can't say enough good about FDLE. And our friends and colleagues at the Florida Sheriff's Association, that team represents all of my colleagues. They wanted to help. So this, this money has just exploded. I was going to 15 today, and they go, nah, Sheriff, let's, let's bump it up some and make it even more interesting. Look, there are people out there that will give their brother up for $100. This is $30,000 cash, no taxes. We don't even have to know who you are. We just need information. Sheriff, you got like your live one, like surveillance video there. I mean, that's a remote area. How much more difficult is that going to make it? Is, it is a remote area. It's an exceptionally remote area. We've had a lot of cooperation from the neighbors in the area. They've told us everything that they're aware of. We are looking for surveillance cameras right now on homes and businesses throughout the geographic area. Our analysts are putting together data that we're gathering. So we not only have detectives on the ground doing work, we have our analysts working with different pieces of what we believe is potential evidence. Our analysts are behind the scene working up information we've put together. We've also processed and are in this process, we have also processed and are currently processing items of evidence at different locations and obviously the vehicles that we took into custody over the weekend from the crime scene. So there literally are dozens and dozens of people working this investigation around the clock right now. Were their bodies found? Were they in, in the trucks? Were they, did the, any reason to believe they were pulled from the trucks? We're not releasing the information about where and how we found the bodies. That gave us a lot of information that we're working on in this investigation, but it wouldn't be appropriate to release it right now. Have you guys talked to the families of the three men, and have they been able to give you any sort of indication or any clues as to what may have happened? Our detectives have met with the family and friends of the family, and they're being totally cooperative with us at this point in time. And what we have learned from them, obviously, we are not at liberty to share right now. If there was something we needed to share in order to generate more information, we would do that. As you know, according to Marcy's law, on Saturday morning, by law, we couldn't even release their names. And that's a weakness in that Marcy's law. So we went to the family of each of the men and we said, we think it's important that people know who these young men were. They're like 23, 27, 30 years old. Know who these young men are so that we can generate the interest in, oh my gosh, I'm from the Frostproof area. I know who that is. I'm from Avon Park. The families were totally cooperative and said, yes, release their names. Release the information you need to release so that we can get all of the information and solve this 
sooner rather than later. To it a little bit with the, his cell phone and one of the victim's fathers, um, but we know rumors are swirling on Facebook. Some family members are getting harassed um, and targeted by the people who think they figured this thing out. Um, what do you think about that? What's your message to those people? Well, first, you know, I've had editorial comment about social media in the past. Oh, most people are well-meaning and want to help, and for that we're grateful. There's a handful of nuts, and you need to shut up and get off of Facebook and leave the families alone. For those that are well-meaning and trying to help, thank you from the bottom of my heart. There are evil, mean, sinister people out here that are, in fact, upsetting the family. And the families took that risk by identifying their children, but it's to them it was worth the risk so that we could get the information out so that potentially we can solve the crime sooner rather than later. And that's what we're after. We're going to work nonstop until there's absolutely nothing left to do. And my bet, because our homicide detectives are the, simply the very best. We've only had like two unsolved homicides in the last 11 years. My best guess is we solve it. I believe it. But solving it later is not acceptable. We need to solve it now. So that's why we need the community's help, because someone out there Someone watching your television program or social media. Social media is a lot of good with a little bad mixed in. Knows. Because they've said, oh my gosh, my brother, my sister, my uncle, my aunt told me. Or they ran to me because they were afraid. Or they came here and asked me to hide a gun. Somebody knows something. And that somebody that calls us makes $30,000 and never, ever has to testify. And that's what we're banking on. When anyone loses their life to a murder or for any other tragic reason, it is horrible. But to think these three young men were gunned down at night on the way to fish in a very quaint, quiet, safe frostproof area chucks the conscience of not only the people in frostproof, but as I've learned throughout the United States based upon the media coverage this weekend. I'm not absolutely convinced of anything at this point in the investigation. When we give you information, as we say and have said all along in every investigation, our goal is to provide as much information as we comfortably can because some things you have to keep confidential so that when you come across the real killers, you know that they didn't watch it on Facebook or social media or the evening news. So I don't know whether it was more than one for an absolute unequivocal fact. I'm giving you the best information that I know at this moment in time. And quite frankly, all of this is subject to change as the investigation goes on. But we're giving you the best information as quick as we can. And then we'll come back and correct it when we get better information or if our conjecture is wrong. And that's what we're doing. We're looking at evidence. We're looking at a crime scene. We're talking to people in the community, friends and family. And we're making assumptions based on that data. And we're sharing some of that with you. And some of this may not be accurate when we get the ca this case solved. But we'll come back and, and straighten that out at the appropriate time. I personally have talked to one of the young men's significant others, 
and she is crushed as you can well imagine she is. Our detectives have worked hand in glove with the families of those that have died and they're crushed as you would expect. They have been grateful. They recognize that we're working 24 seven and it's not one or two detectives. It's not a team of detect, just a team of detectives. It's detectives and forensic analysts and crime analysts and homicide analysts that we've got a huge team working around the clock. We're investigating this case as if they were our brothers our personal brothers, because that's how we investigate crime here at the Sheriff's Office. So we're going at this with all the energy as if it were our personal brothers, because you know what? It is somebody's brother, and we care about that, and we want to solve it. We want to be the voice for those young men who lost their voice on Friday night when their life was snuffed out by some nasty, evil person or persons. And that's what they are. They're nasty, evil, ugly, mean, murdering people. And I would use other adjectives, but you'd bleep that out when it went on the evening news or social media. I, I'm just, I'm angry with whoever would do this to these folks. Do you know, any time that you have a murderer that's not locked up, they can be a threat. But let me underscore, there is no evidence or information at this point that there are people out here on a murdering spree. None. For whatever reason, and we don't know, you had three buddies and you had some murderers that crossed at this point in time. But do I think there's a murdering spree out here? No, we don't see that. If I thought it, if we believed it, if there were evidence to that, we would certainly tell you because we would want everyone to be on their highest guard. But I do tell you this, any person or person that's killed three people, if you cross them, they have nothing left to lose. So I would, cut, I would cut a wide berth around anybody that you normally have conflicts with at this point in time because this person may go off on you too. So once again, we don't know what we don't know. All we know is what we do know, and what we need to know is who they are. that anything had been taken from these guys? Obviously, we don't eliminate that. But we saw items in the trucks that were certainly worthy of theft that weren't taken. Now, that's not to say there was something there that we don't yet know about that wasn't. But we certainly saw items of value that had somebody just wanted to be stealing would have stolen. We don't see that. So we don't see any obvious reason for theft. We don't see any obvious signs of a dope deal gone bad. We don't see any signs of a domestic violence event at this moment in time. So we still don't know why the murder occurred. Usually it's not as complex. Anytime we work these investigations, usually it's not as complex as some novel you read someplace. Usually it's something as simple as when you find them where well, they were parked in the road and wouldn't get out of the way. But we don't know what we don't know. So anything is speculation at this point in the investigation. Anything else? I can't wait to I get to stand back before you and tell you we have this crime solved. And I'll be able to do that when some of your constituents and clients and viewers help us out. Take care. God bless you. See you later.